Hey guys, what's going on? Matt O'Leary back with another video. Today was day one of rookie mini camp over at, I almost said MetLife Stadium. I wish there were MetLife Stadium, but at One Jets Drive, where the New York Jets facility is. And I want to go through some things with the rookies. Like, for instance, we'll start with the fun stuff and then get into some quotes, Robert Sala, them out on the practice field. All that good stuff. But let's start with the rookie numbers. We have some numbers out there. Subject to change. Got to say you got to say it's subject to change. Uh, Braylon Allen wa uh, rocking the zero is kind of cool for just a big bowling ball running back rocking zero. Kind of like it. Jordan Travis with number three, JT3. I absolutely love that. Malachi Corley getting the 17 from Garrett Wilson as Garrett Wilson switches to five is cool. 17, very good wide receiver number. Uh, Davis, 32. 32, I like that for running back number. 34 was going to give me Lamont Jordan vibes. So I really wanted that, though. Key at 33. 33, fine defensive back number. 37, not so much. Don't like that for uh, for uh, Quantes Stiggers. Uh, I know, well, didn't Bryce Hall just wear it? I got that in the comments. Like, Yeah, yeah defensive backs have worn it. It doesn't mean that I have to like 37 as a number. I, I don't think it looks good on a football uniform. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's all personal opinion. You can like 37 if you want to. And Fashionu rocking the 74. For now, some people are upset because that's Nick Mangold's number. How could you distribute Nick Mangold's number? It's not retired right now. Should it be retired? Up for debate, I would say. I would say that's debatable. Uh, but if he does keep 74, that would kind of be cool as like the the passing of the torch, so to speak. All right, so we got our first look at Olu Fashionu out there, pass protecting, which I know they're in shorts, but it still counts. They're still out there, uh, things you love to see. Uh, we just mentioned his number at 74, and the Jets have a plan for Olu in training camp. Robert Sala was talking to the media, uh, and he was like, well, listen, we're going to have... Tyron Smith on a program. We're going to have Morgan Moses on a program. So that means a lot of reps for all their young guys, Max Mitchell, Carter Warren, and Olu on both sides of the line at left and right tackle. I would like to see Olu get some reps at right tackle. I don't like the idea of him going inside to guard, but if there's an injury at either spot on the offensive line, I do think he should be the first one to come in and play. Yes, even if it's on the right side. Malachi Corley, the Yak King, was out there running his routes and catching some passes. Robert Sala spoke on Malachi Corley and the Debo Samuel comparison. Um, uh, sure, you know, for sure. Watching, watching how that kind of evolved, and uh, obviously Kyle. Um, is a uh, is extremely creative in that regard in terms of getting uh, Debo the ball and so there's a lot of tape out there. There's there's tape of a lot of receivers from a lot of different football teams and just finding ways to get them the ball in those non conventional ways. But uh, um, the good thing is and what's been fun over this off season is the, the the system is capable of doing anything we want it to do. It's just a matter of uh, putting words to it and making it happen. Malachi Corley is going to be really fun for the New York Jets as their third wide receiver this year. Probably going to end up being somewhere like fifth or sixth in targets. Uh, fifth. I'll go fifth. I, I it's Relatively close to where uh, you see Mike Williams come in. Uh, obviously, Garrett Wilson's going to be one. I think Tyler Conklin's going to be higher than some people expect. Uh, and I think Brees Hall is going to be pretty high, too, obviously. Robert Sala was also gushing over Jordan Travis, who they view as a developmental guy, as they should. One of the things he noted, his athleticism. He's a tremendous athlete. We feel like he's kind of a, a ball of clay. You know, there's a lot of these kids are coming from college and, uh, um, you know, the style of college. It's tremendous schemes, but they're more tailor-made to, to what they can and can't do rule-wise at the uh, college level. And so you're getting these quarterbacks who... Um, have when it comes to footwork and, and throwing motion and just being able to process and uh, uh, working in NFL offense, getting under center, controlling a huddle, all that good stuff. There's so many things that we feel like we can build on that athleticism. And so there's a lot of uh, excitement um, uh, with regards to that. I've mentioned it before, but I'm rooting hard for Jordan and Travis. Who knows? Maybe he ends up just being a backup quarterback for this team, which is fine. That would still be considered a hit on a fifth round quarterback. Uh, but they really, really like his athletic upside. Again, someone who probably would have went earlier than the fifth round if he didn't get hurt. Uh, and he rode the bike today, but they do expect him to practice at some point over the summer. And that's what I, I want to eventually see him out there, man. Like, we know what Aaron Rodgers is. He's going to get his reps in training camp, not going to play a lot in the preseason. But 
I would like to see Jordan Travis in the preseason and see what the Jets have. And who knows? Maybe he plays this year, but we'll take it. Uh, we'll take it slow for now on Jordan Travis. No rush there. And let's close with Quantez Stiggers, with someone who wasn't mentioned a whole lot in this draft class, a little bit later on. Uh, but Robert Sala was asked about Quantez, and he is almost certain that he's going to be a hit because of his mindset. What can you tell us about Stiggers? I don't know if you were asked a lot about him after the pick uh, in terms of his skill set. Um, <clears throat> you know, the the he's got a tremendous skill set, for one, but the... The reason why we don't think he'll fail is his mindset. That's, uh, you know, and you guys know me by now. People win championships, not athletes. And I'm not saying he's not an athlete. He's a phenomenal athlete. But um, he's got an elite makeup. And, uh, you know, you can put him up against any corner uh, uh, with regards to athleticism and all that. But uh, it's his physical, it's his strain and his mindset that, uh, that we're really excited about. I like the answer. Uh, Robert Sala, as you know, loves every single player on his roster. He speaks only highly of his guys ever. Like you could be roster number 53 guy on the roster 53, and he will talk and gas you up. Like you are the best thing since sliced bread. And as a player, I think you got to love that. It's got to give you confidence as a player that your coach believes in you and says that publicly and all that good stuff. So I'm not knocking Robert Sala for that logic or like doing it that way i'm really not uh, but it, it just goes to show how much he cares about his guys and he really and that's one of the things that got quantez drafted by the jets was his mindset and he was asked by the media as well about his story and man is it a tremendous one long story short you want the whole thing <laughs> uh so yeah i um under recruiting in high school uh kind of like a smaller kid that went to a smaller high school in the city um had a couple offers from from some NAIA schools like uh, uh, Allen and Reinhardt University. Ended up getting an a offer from Lane College of D2. I committed there, uh, and committed there in uh, maybe like February. And then my dad got into a car accident in September. I mean, no, no, my dad got into a car accident in February. I graduated from high school in, August, in May. Reported to Lane in August, and he passed in September, so I dropped out. I came home, be close to my siblings. I got 13 siblings, including my step-siblings, 11 boys, two girls. So did that. Um, worked from, from the time I was out of, dropped out. Then um, my mom signed me up for this league called Fan Control. Went there, won co-defensive player of the year. Got an opportunity to play in the CFL. Went there, won CFL rookie of the year. And then um, a lot of people asked me, like, uh, what's, my, what's, what's, what's my plan? I was like, uh... Honestly, just just play ball, and then I got an opportunity to play in the NFL. So of course, uh, the Toronto Argonauts supported me through this whole process and, and helped me and guided me to get here. Seems like the Jets have some rookies that are pretty easy to root for. Hoping that most of them pan out. It'd be awesome if they get another really deep class here. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. I am Matt O'Leary. I'll catch you guys next time. <laughs>